All you need is a little juju. All you need is a little juju. Hey y'all, it's Juju Bay, and welcome to another collaboration video with me and Real Talk Session Series to bring you a part two of Kitchen Witching. So if you haven't seen part one, I definitely recommend you go head on over to watch part one and then come on back to here for some more Kitchen Witching herbs to use for your manifestation works. Let's go. So the first ingredient that I want to use, not quite a herb, but vegetable that you probably have in your kitchen is onion. And onion is so, so good actually for dispelling and removing negative energies and entities from your home. So you don't want to use the whole onion. You want to actually pull the skin off and keep your skins. You can put the skins in a cauldron or in a pan and whatever apparatus you decide to use, you will light that up, let it smoke up and burn it throughout your house. Make sure you open your windows, even though it is a good smell, but burning onion skins is an old school way to get rid of some just nasty energy that you may not want in your house anymore. So keep your onion skins and you can put the sage down. So the next ingredient that you may have in your kitchen is ginger. Now, I personally like to use ginger for love workings, attraction workings. Um, I find that it really heats up the work because when you think of ginger, it's not quite spicy, but it has some heat to it. And so I find that it adds heat to relationships, uh, attraction, and even, you know, self-love. So if you're wanting to kind of heat up something that you already have working, I think a good ingredient to add some some power to it is ginger and particularly again for relationships attraction sex etc next we have bay leaves and for those who follow the podcast you know i'll be singing i manifest a little with my bay leaves because i do bay leaves is such a wonderful uh, ingredient to use it's good for money it's good for success it's good for wealth it's good for good luck attraction it's kind of like all the bomb things that you want in your life you could use for bay leaves some people put bay leaves in the four corners of their home for good luck and peace in the home you can also write down your manifestations or things that you want to draw into your life and write it on the bay leaf itself i actually want to put one on so here like you have a bay leaf you could put love peace protection whatever it is that you're trying to draw into your life and then you can burn the bay leaf for a manifestation work so that's how i like to manifest a little with my bay leaves oh you can also carry bay leaf on you in a satchel of some sort because it is so drawing and it brings a lot of good things into your life you can make a satchel with it a mojo bag with it you can carry it in your left pocket or also you can put some in your wallet so maybe you want to bring some more money into your life write down money or some dollar signs or whatever your intention is on the bay leaf and keep it in your wallet as a side note keep your wallet clean that also can bring in some money make some room for the money to go And lastly, we have allspice. I love allspice because it just has a good smell. I like it in general, but allspice is also really good for love workings, money, good luck, relationships, friendships too. So if you're doing any type of working, jar work, um, whatever you may want to use allspice for, this is a good ingredient to use. Also with allspice, it's really good for healing and health. So. If you are using allspice in your workings or whatever you're using it for, that's another property that it carries. It's a good, good healing ingredient. And even with all of these ingredients, now that you know some of the properties of them, when you're cooking, you can say those intentions while you are cooking. So if you know that allspice is good for love, if you're making something, if you're making, I don't know, a pie, what are these allspice for? <laughs> if you're making, whatever you were using your allspice for you can speak those intentions as you're putting the allspice in your food or your drink or whatever it is that you are creating for yourself so it's not limited to just workings and spiritual work but because these have spiritual meanings 
incorporate those spiritual meanings as you are preparing and see how it works for you. Another aside is try to keep your kitchen as clean as possible. I know it can be a lot, particularly those who cook. I try to, uh, I love to cook and I try to clean up as I'm cooking because at the end, nobody wants to do all those dishes. But keeping a clean kitchen is so important in your spiritual work. I know sometimes we can think about our elders. I know I think about my grandmother. She wasn't going to sleep if the kitchen was not clean. And it's not just about the physical presentation of the kitchen, but it's spiritual too. You have to make room for the workings to work. You have to make room for the manifestations. You have to make room for the healing in your kitchen. And because kitchens are portals and kitchens are often the places where our elders and ancestors had access to these ingredients and to this plant medicine and where they were able to actually put their hands in it in the kitchen, it's so important that the kitchen is clean and pristine as possible so that you can properly do your spiritual work. Because you want to do your spiritual work in places that is clean and inviting for the work that you want to do. Thank y'all for tuning in to part two of Kitchen Witching. I hope you all enjoyed that. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to my channel, as well as Real Talk Session Series channel to stay up to date with all the good hoodoo juju information. Don't forget to listen to my podcast at A Little Juju Podcast and uh, The Miseducation of the People Podcast as well. You can check out my interview on there too. I hope you all enjoyed. Be well. And remember, all you need is a little juju. Later.